So now in this video, we have the uh, 74HC14 that I used in the last video. I have some more jumpers though. I am tying the uh, inputs to the uh, positive supply on that side and the negative supply on uh, that side. That's the inputs. This is the power pin to the positive supply and the power pin to the negative uh, supply. So right now we have a blue LED. Most of the power is to the negative supply there. So it's flowing uh, that way. If I turn the uh, trim pot now, uh, the red LED is lit up, so power is coming from the positive supply. Um, we're using one of the uh, knot gates on here. They also have a Schmidt trigger effect, so right at the halfway point, it could be either high or low, but um, there's a little wiggle room. It could be in either state, but you go high enough, the output's low. You go low enough, the output is high. Hopefully that makes sense. Not all integrated uh, circuits have the uh, Schmidt trigger output. So now these uh, logic gate uh, integrated circuits, there's also other uh, integrated circuits uh, circuits that can be built into the integrated circuit. Um, they are commonly meant for like five volts. There's, uh, you know, sometimes variation. These tend to, uh, these uh, high speed CMOS versions tend to be able to work uh, down to uh, two volts. Um, this particular one can, and a lot of them can. So we're gonna grab the multimeter probes. I have it set to measure uh, voltage, and um, I wasn't sure how well the output was doing, but uh, to begin with, um, we can look at the supply voltage. So we're not actually getting quite five volts according to the multimeter at uh, the board there. Just a spec short, you know, that's pretty much five volts, but it's not saying five, it's 4.9 and like eight or something. Um, but you know, practically five volts. So um, I just, I'll go all the way to the positive supply there and uh, we can take a voltage measurement of the uh, trim pot and I have the probes backwards. So yeah, you get the probes backwards, you just get a uh, negative voltage. That's uh, all that happens. No big deal. Okay, so 4.981, we're making a pretty good connection to the positive supply. And there you can see, um, you know, not a perfect connection to ground, but uh, not bad right there. That's with the blue LED though being lit. So let's look without the blue LED. And uh, there you can see, really good connection to ground there. So we can get to the uh, negative supply uh, rail. And uh, why did that, oh, I'm in the wrong spot there. So yeah, luckily I didn't uh, power that. It would have fried. Now we're gonna lower the uh, voltage of the uh, trim pot. You know, a bit below uh, negative. And uh, there you can see we got zero volts. The output there with the red LED, we got 4.5 volts. If I yank the red LED though, then you will see that uh, at the output, we can actually get the supply voltage right there. So now we have the uh, power supply. I actually would not have blown the blue LED if I accidentally shorted it across the uh, supply rails um, because I have current limited to uh, 20 milliamps with the power supply. So it'll automatically uh, limit the uh, current to a 20 milliamps. If you really short circuit, this will also turn off um, completely. It, uh, if it thinks there's a short circuit, it uh, just turns off. Now, we uh, have these jumpers that are at the input of the other knot gates. So you can see we got uh, this uh, bottom knot gate there, very bottom is the supply pin. So the two above it is the uh, knot gate, the next two are knot gates, next two are knot gates. So where there's an input, and uh, this is a supply voltage, as I said before. So right below it is the input to a knot gate uh, right there. That's what you should do uh, with uh, most of these integrated circuits. Um, you can look at the data sheet for more specifics. Usually they'll include it. Um, but uh, generally it's recommended don't leave inputs floating. And uh, most of these inputs are just looking at voltage. They're not really letting current through, although a little bit slips through, uh, practically none though. Um, so you can put them to a supply rail. And you can see we got about 11 milliamps when uh, the red LED is lit and about two milliamps when the blue LED was lit. I was getting more in the uh, video that I did and um, I'll uh, pluck these until, uh, I'll pluck the whole side right here. But there you can see already it changed there. So yeah, now we're up at like 13 and uh, with the blue LED, there you can see like four instead of two right there. Um, so, you know, um, it might not even be it's probably like an alternating amount of current, like kind of going up and down a little bit, but that's probably, yeah, there we go. We went to like 15. So um, leaving them uh, floating, they pick up stray signals in the air 
and um, you know they're they're not powering anything, so it's not a large amount of power, but uh, you know there may be other problems too. So it's best to give a voltage to the input, lock the output in place, and you should uh, be looking at the uh, pin layout while you do this. But I know if I just go down two rows, um, that will be the input. Uh, the very top one in input so two more down because uh, there's one input and one output for these and I kind of have to go at an angle with this one so I got to be careful make sure I go down two more and put it in there so um and I don't know what I just oh the uh, alligator clip from the power supply came loose that's all it is I have a clip to uh, if you ever uh, wonder how this is uh, clipped these are uh, called breadboard headers right here and uh, or, or just headers um yeah those long pins can go through all kinds of different boards with holes in them and then they got uh, short ones there actually you can solder the short ones like that then you got long ones um you can plug stuff into them but uh even the short side the uh, alligator clip uh, clips to uh, fairly nicely right there so both of the holes are going to the uh, negative supply now we have the red led lit and uh, we're back to like 11 milliamps of current, approximately, right there. Again, it's not as accurate as if you took a current measurement with the multimeter. Uh, but we were like 13 with the red LED, now it's 11, and now it's uh, 2, whereas it was like 4 before. So, I don't usually uh, put the uh, extra jumpers on there when I make a video, because then I kind of have to explain what they're doing. And uh, it's kind of confusing, confusing to uh, just quickly mention what they're doing um, you know, you don't want to leave them uh, floating if, uh, you know, you're making a video on another topic. You know, you almost need like a whole video just to point out the uh, floating input. So you don't want to, you know, have to make that little video into a longer video every single time. So just be aware of that. Um, yeah, that's about it. I was just curious what the output was uh, doing. And uh, I knew, you know, CMOS generally can go from rail to rail. But uh, when it's powering a load, even though these are light loads, we saw with the red LED, you know, it's only needing, um, well, the red LED needs more current. With the uh, blue LED, you know, we only need about uh, 2 milliamps of current, and it threw it off a little bit. Whereas the red LED needed uh, uh, quite a bit more current, and it got thrown off a lot more. So um, these have a absolute maximum, the output of uh, 25 milliamps of current, but the total integrated circuit is uh, 50 milliamps you know so they're probably intended to work with uh, you know like 10 milliamps if you're just using a handful of them but if you're using them all probably like 5 milliamps of uh, current um, uh, you know just for a safety so and that'll give you like 25 milliamps of current total about half of the absolute max you don't want to always go to the absolute max usually want to stay about half below that and uh, with the case of these integrated circuits, you go even lower, it's even better. So, um, yeah, I think I rambled on long enough. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.